Chapter 3 Emancipation of Asia and Africa A. Asia Introduction The world is divided into seven continents. These continents include Asia, Africa, North America, Europe, Australia, South America and Antarctica. The continent named Asia has an important place in the world history. This continent is the biggest of all from the perspectives of area and population. The emergence of old religion and culture is also seen in this continent. Asia is referred to as direction of the sun rising, so Greeks referred it as Asu. Because of this name, the continent got the name Asia. After 15th century, the modern era began in the world. Due to Renaissance, there was an awakening movement. European nations began to develop. There was a great change in human life because of rationalization. This movement created awareness among people about ignorance and superstitions. People developed analytical attitude among themselves. They were so curious to gain knowledge, to watch and find something new. So, European nations discovered sea ways to go to Asian and African continents. Afterwards, European nations forced colonialism over Asia and African continents. Asian Imperialism Asian countries were backward and underdeveloped. They lacked of nationalistic feelings. The kings were indulged in spilt and deceit benefited in Asia. European nations were benefited by this and created imperialism. Asian people did not oppose it because European nations had national superiority aggressive nationalistic feeling and high quality weapons and a trained army. European imperialism was so dominant and aggressive that the two countries, Japan and Thailand, were only detached from European imperialism in Asia. England, which is known as the mother of democracy, established colonies in two third part in the world. France, which gave freedom, equality and fraternity to the world, was not away from colonialism. France established colonies in Indonesia, which were created after the Second World War as well. These colonies were in the hands of France till the removal of imperialism from the world. Dutch had also established imperialism by creating colonies in Indonesia. The nations from Asia could not fight with European nations because of their ignorance, superstition and backwardness. European nations were benefited by this and established imperialism in Asia. The Process of European Colonialism Firstly, the Industrial Revolution began in 18th century in England. Then it spread to Europe. Factories were established and men were replaced by machines. To accelerate the wheel of machine continuously, European nations were in need of raw materials. It was also necessary for them to have their own market to sell things. Therefore, European nations started to establish colonies in Asia. They discovered islands and established the colonies by dominating in trade and commerce. European nations took the power in their hand from Asia and controlled the sovereignty of nations. In the middle of 18th century, European nations established colonies and 
created imperialism in Asia. Imperialism was created through aggressive nationalism, national superiority, industrialization, and economic power. Imperialism was not unknown to Asian people because Greeks and Romans had also established their rule in ancient and Middle Age in Asia. But old imperialism was so limited in nature. In old imperialism, there was only one motive, that was a king had to attack another kingdom and to take it under his control. Modern imperialism was more aggressive than old imperialism. The intention of modern imperialism was not only to expand empire, but also to establish supremacy over economic, social, cultural and industrial factors with political dominance. The Moderate Period from 1885 to 1905. Moderate period existed from 1885 to 1905. In this period, Indians put forward their demands through applications and petitions. The moderate leaders believed in British people's sense of justice without opposing British power. The moderate leaders were of the view that Indians would get their demands the following were the moderate leaders Vyomesh Chandra Banerjee, Surendranath Banerjee, Firoz Shah Mehta, Barrister Ranade, Namdar Gokhale, Dada Bhai Noroji. Advocate Telang, Barrister Chandavarkar, Gopal Ganesh Agarkar, Anand Mohan Bose. Lal Mohan Ghosh, C. Subramanyam Ayyar, Badruddin Tayabji, Dinshaw Vacha, Ramesh Chandra Dutt, Shankaran Ayyar, P. Ananda Charlu, Ranga N. Naidu, etc. The moderate leaders could attract the attention of British government. Justice was given to political, economical, social issues and problems. They had created awareness and national movement among Indians. An extremist period from 1905 to 1920. 1905 to 1920 was the extremists period of national movement. The extremists thoughts were different from the moderate leaders. The moderate leader's method was not approved by extremists. Extremists did not believe in righteous of British officer. Instead, they put their demands aggressively and opposed British government's policy of injustice. In Maharashtra, Lokman Tilak is called the father of discontent of India. In Bengal, Bipin Chandrapal and in Punjab, Lala Lajpat Rai were chief extremists. They were called as Lal, Bal and Pal. Extremists leaders proposed fourfold parts of Swarajya, Swadeshi, boycott of foreign goods and national education. British officers used divide and rule to oppress the Indians. Showing administrative reason, Lord Curzon divided Bengal in 1905. It was divided in east and west part. In the east Bengal, Muslim and in the west Hindu majority existed. Lord Curzon's purpose was not pure. He wanted to divide Hindus and Muslims to reduce the power of national movement. At that time, to oppose Bengal's division, Wang Bhanga movement came into existence. This movement was led by Surendranath Banerjee. Division of Bengal was implemented on 16th October 1905. 
the same day, was observed as National Black Day. Divide and Rule was opposed by newspapers, meetings. Ravindranath Tagore organized Raksha Bandhan to show integrity. Indians used indigenous goods, that is, things which were made by Indians, and boycotted foreign goods. Students left the government schools and colleges and took admission in Indian schools and colleges, where national education was provided. The youth sang the song of Vande Matram. It was written by Bakim Chandra Chatterjee. This movement paved the way of national level within short period. At that time, British officers kept chief Indian leaders in the prison to curb the strength of the movement. But this movement was working powerfully. Lastly, on the 12th December 1911, British King George V. cancelled the division of Bengal at Delhi Darbar. Decolonization In Asian and African continents, European countries had established their colonies which came to an end in 20th century and it is called decolonization. Decolonization started after Second World War. That's why 20th century is also called the age of decolonization. Asian and African continents were ruled by England, France, Holland and Portugal. These Asian and African countries became free in the 20th century. After the Second World War, United Nations Organization was established to control the warlike situations. UNO started decolonizing the nations. UNO became the important platform to oppose colonialism. The Afro-Asian members declared that colonialism was contradictory to the charter of UNO. In 1955, non-allied nations had organized the conference in Bandung where 25 African and Asian representatives opposed colonialism. In 1961, UNO established a special committee for decolonization. UNO's general body opposed colonialism and declared this position on its colonies. Finally, decolonizing process started very fast and India, Sri Lanka and Myanmar, that is Burma, became free from British imperialism. Indonesia and Indochina had to fight long to become free. Firstly, Chinese people fought with France and secondly with America under the leadership of Ho Chi Minh. After that Vietnam became free on 1975. Indonesian people fought with Dutch under the leadership of Dr. Sukarno successfully. The condition which was favorable for decolonization. The following favorable conditions played a vital role for decolonizing Asia and Africa. First, Japan which was a small country defeated the powerful country, Russia, in 1905. Therefore, Asian people got the self-confidence and realized that Europeans can be defeated. Second, the organizations of nationalist movement originated in colonies due to the doctrine of self-decision, which was advocated by American President Woodrow Wilson. They demanded political freedom. Third, Asian people were of the view that Asia is for the Asian people. They thought that to free people from the clutches of foreign rule was their prime duty. By considering this, Japan took a stand against Europeans.
Fourth, Asian people felt that they would get political freedom after the World War. Therefore, the soldiers from Asia helped allied countries in the First and Second World Wars. Fifth, colonial countries got victory in the Second World War. They became poor by losing their wealth in the World War. So, they were unable to keep their colonies under their control. Sixth, America and Russia were emerged as powerful nations after the Second World War. They were not in favor of colonization. Hence, these conditions paved the way for decolonization. China In the end of 19th century, China's Manchu dynasty became weak. Taking this opportunity, first England and France, followed by Russia, America and Japan entered China. Western countries started exploiting China. When Manchu dynasty's administration started to deteriorate, Japan took an opportunity and defeated it. In China, Western countries started to impress their culture. As a result, Reformation in China took place. In this Reformation, Taping Revolt and Boxers' Rebellion started, but they were unsuccessful events. In this way, in Chinese nationalism grew. Mao Tse Tung When Mao Tse Tung was getting his higher education, he had contact with ideologists like Kang Yu Wei, Lang Chi Chao, Yang Chang, Chi Tu Tus. This attracted him to communism. He founded Communist Party. He started unification of peasants and stopped their exploitation. In the period of 1945 AD in the world, Second World War continued. In that time, Japan established its power over China. Mao Tse Tung got the help of Soviet Russia and America and developed his power and established nationalist China. Communists got Mao Tse Tung's leadership with the help of Chinese people. He completed Red Revolution successfully on 1st October 1949. Then, Chinese people's rule was declared. Mao made China's all-round development and created a history like America and Russia. China is regarded as the world's third largest power. Sen Yat-sen Sen Yat-sen was a national leader of China. He took great efforts to westernize and unite China. He established an association called Tung Meng Hui. On 10th October 1911, Hamako bomb blast raised the revolution in China and Kuomintang Party established the power in many parts of China. Dr. Sen Yat-sen, who voiced about democratic government, became the president of it. This revolt in China dissolved Manchu dynasty. Dr. Sen Yat-sen had given his resignation for his presidentship. Yuan Chai-kai had taken the responsibility of presidentship. During the First World War, Japan kept her 21 demands before China. But China turned them off, and it joined Allied powers. Kaoming Tang Party strengthened their power, and Canton City was captured by them. There, they established democratic government. Dr. Sen Yat-sen's democratic, nationalist, and socialist policies were adopted. China started to rebuild the nation with the help of Russia industrialization and 
land development were given more importance. Military colleges were started. This type of policy was continued by socialist government. Dr. Sen Yat Sen's principle of nationalism, democracy and welfare of people awakened the common people of China. Dr. Sen Yat Sen propagated democratic policy and his contribution to free China was such a remarkable one that he is called the father of China. Home Rule Movement The movement which had the motive to see the administration of our own country and it is the right came into existence is called Home Rule Movement. In Ireland, this movement started first to free India from England. India and Ireland were sailing in the same boat. Therefore, Annie Besant was first to put such thought. Lokmanya Tilak adopted this movement and spread it all over India. Revolutionary Movement Revolutionary movement means extreme nationalist feelings worked on the minds of Indians instead of extremist principles. The principles of revolutionary leaders were to kill, to devote, to sacrifice and they thought that it was the only way to get freedom. The revolutionary leaders thought that to make their motherland free, they had to kill British officers and create terror in them. Indians also built secret organizations and made weapons, trained the Indians and imported weapons. Vasudev Balwant Farke, Chapekar Brothers, Anand Lakshman Kanhere, Senapati Bapat, Swatantre Veer, Vidi Savarkar, Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev, Rajguru, Chandrasekhar Azad, Khudiram Bos, Madanlal Dhingra, Ram Prasad Bismil, Ashwakullah Khan were male revolutionaries. Kalpana Dutt, Preeti Lata Vadedar, Shanti Ghosh, Suniti Chaudhary, Madam Kama were women revolutionaries. Because of revolutionaries in and out of India, national integrity increased and freedom movement progressed. Rollat Act But even then, in 1919, Rollat Act was passed. The law was unfair and Indians called it Black Act. To oppose the Black Act throughout India, furious feelings arose. Mahatma Gandhi protested and appealed to go on strike. A lot of Indians gave positive responses to him. Rise of Nationalism Due to the British rule and awakened Indians stressed on national integrity, British taught that all are equal before the law. The railways, roads and telephone brought fast communication. British people started giving Western education. Printing press was started to discuss the various issues. British people established sole monopoly on Indian people. Through newspaper, periodicals, Indians could understand the concept of freedom, humanity, equality, democracy, nationalism, ex Indians started revolting against exploiting nature of British people and, likewise, there was a rise of nationalism. Indian Freedom Movement European countries established imperialism in Asian continent. Imperialism was established by England in Asian continent on a large scale. India was the chief colony of British people in Asian continent. Indian people fought with British government to free India and they had a thrilling history. 
In 1453, Constantinople was captured by Turkish people. So European could not go to the eastern countries by land. European people had to find out another way for trade purpose. In 1498, Portuguese sailor Vasco da Gama came to Calicut of India. Portuguese started trade with India by sea route. In 17th century, other European countries came to India for business purpose, in which England was the powerful nation. In 16th century, East India Company was established in London. Queen Elizabeth permitted to trade with Eastern countries. The East India Company established its colony in Western India. British people took the advantages of illiteracy of the Indians to exploit them. British people came to India for trade purpose, but took advantages of political upheavals. In 1757, East India Company established their rule in Plassey. After that, British Governor Generals enlarged British Empire in India. The policy of Dalhousie was to annex the Indian small kingdoms. So, Indian kingdoms and kings became angry. To oppose annexation policy, Indians organized the historical revolt of 1857, but British officers oppressed it. Queen of England had given declaration and declared that company's rule would soon come to an end. The company's power was given to British Parliament. Azad Hind Sena Quit India movement was spread to Indians who were settled in Southeastern Asia, China and Japan. Ras Bihari Bose established Azad Hind Army in Japan by taking the inspiration from parallel government. Later on, this army was led by Subhash Chandra Bose. He appealed to the people, Give me blood and I will give you freedom. He gave the slogan, Chalo Dilli, through Azad Hind Army. He had prepared to fight against British by taking the help of the nations who were the foes of England. Jallianwala Bagh Massacre Satyagra was used to oppose the Rolat Act in Punjab province. At that time, British government oppressed Indians. Dr. Satyapal, Dr. Saifuddin Kichlu were banished. Mahatma Gandhi was not allowed into Punjab. An army was called to create terror in Indians at Amritsar. Gandhian Era From 1920 to 1947 Tilak Era came to an end on 1st August 1920 and Gandhi Era started. Mahatma Gandhi gave new dimension to freedom struggle by truth, non-violence, and Satyagra. On the platform of National Congress, Indians opposed British policy by non-cooperation, civil disobedience movement, and quit India movement. Using these weapons, scope of freedom was enlarged and made easy to get freedom. Non-cooperation movement it was known that British rule will not exist without the cooperation of Indians. By keeping this view in mind, Gandhiji decided to start non-cooperation movement against British rule. The resolution of non-cooperation movement got consent at National Meet Congress session in Nagpur in 1920. Throughout this movement, it was decided to boycott British goods school and colleges, awards and honours, the elections of parliament, etc. British suppressed people. British police fired at the peaceful procession 
which was carried out at Gorakhpur district of Uttar Pradesh. Therefore, the enraged people set the police station ablaze. One officer and 22 police were burnt alive in this incident. After listening this news, Mahatma Gandhi was so disappointed that he withdrew the non-cooperation movement in 1922. Mahatma Gandhi was arrested by the police thereafter. As it was known that non-cooperation movement stopped, Swarajya party participated in election and adopted the policy to obstruct against the government after entering the Legislative Assembly. Background of Non-Cooperation Movement During the First World War, Home Rule Movement kept watch on British government and revolutionary leaders created terror by using weapons. At that time, British government passed the Indian Security Law to keep away seditions. This law would automatically come to an end after war. But Indians never stopped doing revolutions. Rollet Act Committee was established to stop seditious actions. According to that committee's report, British government passed two bills. Seditious person's trial should be held before three judges in a special and secret court. Special court's judgment should not be appealed in any court. According to Rollet Act, any doubtful person without inquiry can be imprisoned for long period. These two bills were violation of freedom and justice. Civil Disobedience Mahatma Gandhi agitated against British government by starting another movement, that is, civil disobedience. Civil disobedience means to violate unjust and oppressive law formed by British government politely. Mahatma Gandhi accelerated civil disobedience movement to decrease the tax of the salt. Every Indian had to bear the load of salt tax. It was also the demand of Congress to cancel the tax of salt. Mahatma Gandhi selected the place, Dandi of Gujarat, for breaking the salt tax by using passive political resistance movement. Gandhiji started his journey with selected followers on 12th March 1930. Mahatma Gandhi and his followers started the journey from Sabarmati to Dandi and crossed 385 kilometers in 25 days by walking. He violated the law by preparing salt from the seashore of Dandi and then the movement of civil disobedience started all over India. This movement was a good step. It is described that Gandhiji prepared handful of salt and castrated the British Empire. Dharsana passive political resistance was important in civil disobedience movement. It was led by Sarojini Naidu in 1930. Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan or Sarhad Gandhi led the civil disobedience movement in Northwest Province. Quit India Movement Quit India Movement has an important place in Indian freedom struggle. The Working Committee of National Congress sanctioned the resolution named Quit India at Wardha in July 14, 1942. The resolution of Wardha was sealed at All India Congress meet held at Mumbai under the chairmanship of Maulana Azad on 7th August, 1942. The leadership of this movement was given to Mahatma Gandhi. He started this movement against British by giving the message to Indians, do or die. But at dawn, the main leaders of National Congress named Maulana Azad, Pandit Nehru, 
Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel and Mahatma Gandhi were arrested to suppress the movement and put behind the bars on 9th August 1942. All Indians were charged due to this incident and came on the street. The meetings were arranged in Mumbai, Pune, Banaras, Delhi, Meerut, Mathura, Allahabad to protest British rule. The Satyagrahis took the administration in their hand in some of the areas and established parallel government. The parallel government was established under the leadership of Nana Patil at Satara district in Maharashtra. Such parallel governments were established at Purnia in Bihar, Balia at Uttar Pradesh, Midnapur at Bengal and many other places. India became free. After the long time, the Second World War came to an end. England lost many things in this World War. England realized that it was very difficult for them to continue the rule in India. By giving up imperialism, they broke the integrity of India and divided it into two nations, India and Pakistan. Afterwards, India got independence on 15th August 1947. Pandit Nehru took the responsibility power as the first Prime Minister of Free India. Dr. Rajendra Prasad became the President of India. The drafting committee was formed under the chairmanship of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. The Indian constitution came into existence due to his hard efforts on 26th January 1950. Hence, India originated as a democratic republic nation in the world history. Origin of Nationalistic Feelings European nations exploited colonies on a large scale by establishing imperialism in Asia. But, Asian people could realize the modern ideology of liberalism with Europeans. Asian people saw Western education, culture, nationalism, self-government, democracy, humanism, equality and social justice. From the beginning of 20th century, Asian people faced the worst effects of colonialism. Indians could realize that only the imperialism of Europeans was responsible for the worst economic condition. Then, the nationalistic feeling was originated among the colonies in Asia. The process of decolonization was started thereafter. Progress of National Congress Indians got the platform to express their grievances to the British government and on this platform progress of national movement was started. Establishment of National Congress Against British policy, learned Indians established many organizations in Mumbai, Madras and Bengal. But there was no organization to represent all India political organizations. Retired British officer Alan Octavian Hume took leadership and established National Congress on all India level in 1885. For this purpose, Sir William Wedderburn and Sir Henry Cotton, retired officers, had helped Alan Hume. The first session of National Congress was held at Gokulda Stagepal Sanskrit School, Mumbai, on 28 December 1885. The president of the first session was a renowned law expert and great thinker, Vyomesh Chandra Banerjee. To share the session, 72 Indian representatives 
were present to participate in the first session of National Congress. The following representatives were present. Dada Bhai Noroji, Firoz Shah Mehta, Barrister Telang, Dinshaw Wacha, Narendra Nath Sen, Girija Bhushan Mukherjee, Barrister Ranade, Dr. R. G. Bhandarkar, Gopal Ganesh Agarkar, Rangaya Naidu, G. Subramanyam Ayer, V. Raghvacharya, Ananda Charlu, Ganga Prasad Verma, Motilal Nehru, N. G. Chandavarkar, etc. The first session continued for three days.